All right, next time you watch your favorite Hollywood film, I want you to pay attention to something. The credits at the end. Not one person is the sole reason for the success of the film that you're seeing. It's a collaborative effort of many people coming together. So I'm gonna show you guys a behind the scenes look at how we shot the Explore video for Fujifilm and just what went into that. All right, so just a couple of weeks ago, um, before all of this madness, I had woken up one morning, just normal day, and I had seen a message uh, in my inbox, and it was some, from somebody that I'm in contact with over at Fujifilm, and they asked, you know, we're gonna be launching the new X-T4 soon, as you know, it's been rumored, uh, is this something that you wanna be a part of? And immediately I'm like, holy shit, like, yeah, I would love to be a part of this. Oh my God, so immediately I replied back, and after that, Fujifilm sent me the camera in the mail and asked me like, hey, would you be able to create some stuff, whether it's uh, still images as well as video to help us promote the camera when it comes out at launch? I said, yeah, totally. And um, after that, I came together collectively as a group with a bunch of my friends in my circle. And we came up with the idea to just, you know, uh, go really above and beyond. I got this great opportunity from them and I wanted to show my appreciation for it by just you know blowing them out of the water. So we came up with an idea collectively as a group and uh, the group of friends that I worked with on this and we filmed it. It came into fruition. I sent it out to Fujifilm and they were blown away. They were just totally happy and the feeling that I got in return was just amazing and it was something just so awesome and I was just excited for this video to come out. Long and behold, somebody in that group had a little bit of a disagreement with what was going on. And that's all we'll say about that. And unfortunately, the talent in that original video uh, refused to sign the talent release forms afterwards because of their relationship with the original person that was on the first video we made. I spent tons of my own money on it. Um, other people in my friends group worked on it and donated hours of their time as well as myself. And it was really something that I was very proud of as well as everybody else who worked on it. And it was a shame that it just didn't come to fruition and it will never see the light of day because of that. Now, where does that leave us with the Explore video? Now, after that, I had to basically call Fujifilm and say, hey, listen guys, like I'm an idiot. Like I uh, didn't get the talent release waiver form signed. It just wasn't fair, kind of what happened. So I went out to the beach with my girlfriend and it was a Friday night and I was just basically kind of two days past the deadline of, you know, bring the content so that they could bring it to the launch of the camera. And I remember sitting there and looking at the ocean and my girlfriend said, why don't you film a new video? I don't, I, I really, I'm really disappointed. And I usually like to let Sean come to conclusions himself, but I had to help him out here a little bit. In my head, I'm like, you have two days. You can do this, you've done it before. Um, so I said, well, why don't you just make a new video? You know, you have two cameras, you have the X-T4 and the X-T3, you have lights, you have audio, you have an apartment, like, you could do this. There's just no way. There's no way that's gonna happen. So, long and behold. Fuji friends, if you're listening to this, I value you and I appreciate you. Obviously, by now you have heard the news on what has happened with our last shoot. I'm not the type to give in and, and give up easily. We've got two more days. I don't know if you guys are around, but uh, I would love to put something together over this weekend and show Fuji who we are and what we can do and come together as a group effort and make something amazing. Let me know if you guys are down. I saw you dancing like smoke. You can't fail unless you give up. And we weren't gonna give up on this. So Sean sent out a message to everybody and said, hey, who's in? We're gonna do this again. We don't have any time to figure it out. We're just gonna do it and uh, we'll figure it out on the way. We were really up uh, against the deadline because uh, even though the original project fell through, we still had about 48, 48 hours to get to meet the deadline with Fuji. And Sean did not give up. Uh, he did not. He's like, no, nah, I don't care that the other part fell through. We're gonna do something else. So we, we pivoted 180 degrees and came up with a new concept. Uh, and he said, listen, we're." 
he said, you got to come up with something. I said, all right, no problem. So me, Jonathan, Dana, and Sean all got on the FaceTime call and started discussing our ideas of what we wanted to do with this project. Um, that call took probably uh, close to two hours from beginning to end, going over all of the ideas that we all had, things that we knew we could do, things that were possible, things that weren't possible. It was actually kind of relieving when you hit me up to do this video because I was at the end of a three-day personal development seminar down in San Diego and I was in the mood to create. I was feeling hyped up and we were shooting that night. So I mobbed it 9 p.m. to meet you guys up in LA at what, 11 o'clock or whatever time we started. I was blown away with like the level of just sheer like commitment, generosity and, and, and sheer excitement. So it was just crazy to see that they were acting like this. And there we go, fire was ignited again. I was like ready to do this. It helped just kind of refine our ideas into kind of like a single minute story that we could tell and, and not be too all over the place. And I, I really think the planning in that area, spending two hours out of 48 and just planning and just talking really helped save the day at the end of it because we were able to actually spend all of our time kind of visualizing the shots and visualizing what the video would look like condensed into one minute versus having all these big grand ideas and then trying to edit them and then end up making something that is so much bigger than we intended. And it all just started coming together as we went along as we raced again the clock. Meanwhile, long and behold, Fujifilm in New Jersey, our people that we know over there, have no idea what's going on at all, which is the greatest part about this. They think that on Monday, I'm gonna be sending them just some photographs that I took of my girlfriend at the ocean, a, a pretty model, like I don't know what. Jump forward to Saturday, we had 67, 70% of an idea. Uh, Ori reached out to his good friend Jordan, who's the main star that you see. He and I have been friends for probably four or five years. Um, back in Virginia, we were homies before we moved out here to LA. I got roped into it. Uh, basically, I was doing a tattoo on him and I told him, I was like, hey man, if you need any help doing anything with your film stuff or you know, have any projects that are coming up that you want me to help out with, let me know and uh, we can get something going. Um, and sure enough, the very next day he hit me up and I was like, hey, I have this thing. It's, it's kind of urgent if you want to help me. You know, a couple of my friends are, are doing this thing for Fujifilm and, you know, it'd be great if you could help out. So he came out. We came up with this scene with uh, Ori's girlfriend, who's the model inside of the video. And the first day we got to filming, we went uh, right out, I remember it was raining, and we got some of the scenes where he's just, you know, a photographer inside of the commercial. He's taking some photos of her, but also he's showcasing the vlogging capabilities of the X-T4, so you'll see like the, the selfie shots and everything like that. So it was cool that we got like a whole bunch of, uh, just the usability and the, the hybrid dynamic of the camera to be able to showcase inside that part. And everybody came together and kind of just like added a part to it. This truly came from the heart of everybody that touched this project. We all worked extremely hard on it and long hours. We had you know, 48 hours to make this thing happen. It's, it's rare that something like this gets pulled off in that, time, in that short a time frame. And then to have the client, in this case Fuji, uh, love it, it, it just, it, it really, it's a good, it's a really nice sense of accomplishment and everybody came together and kind of just like added a part to it. Uh, my girlfriend Michelle came out, she like kind of second AC'd if you will, so she was slating for us. Jonathan Masters was rolling sound on that. Uh, Ori was gimbal opping and directing while I was camera opping as well and we had like two cameras going and uh, Ashley and Jordan just did like a phenomenal job. Then uh, fast forward to later that night, we didn't stop. Um, we went downtown to, to Los Angeles. It finally stopped raining and everything. And this is where we got all of the night sequences where Jordan's kind of going around Los Angeles, taking pictures at nighttime and stuff like that. It was really great to work as a team with a bunch of like-minded people. You know, we all had our own roles, but we would all work together in every aspect to make sure that everything was coming out the best it could. 
He didn't get done there until about four o'clock in the morning. We went down to Lower Grand, which is an iconic location in downtown LA. Uh, you just have like this big open skylight on there. And earlier we kind of had like a, a kitchen scene there where you know, there's thunder and lightning. And if you actually look in the skylight scene, that's all VFX. That is the work and doing of Ori McGinnis. He's just such a talented dude and talented editor. So he put all of that together as well as the town hall shots. That's all fake lightning in the sky that you see. So we got Jordan cruising through there. Um, we even used Dana's uh, Subaru, popped the, uh, the hatch on the back and uh, had Ori and Dana sit out the back while I drove because I was one of the only other ones could, who could drive stick and they kind of got all of the tracking shots on, uh, on a Ronin. Um, Dana is just one of the most killer gimbal ops out there. He makes it look like a steady cam, and I'm not much of a proponent for gimbals. I don't normally like them, but this guy, fucking beast, dude. If you're watching this, thank you so much for your help on that. We went over to the location with all the LED lights and everything, um, and we were kind of even worried that we were gonna be able to film in there. It was like one o'clock in the morning. Um, we lit it with just kind of like light wands, like LED light wands, and tried to match the actual color temperature of the, the lights around you to really just mimic and motivate that lighting. And we got some really great shots there. And it's funny because when we first pulled up, uh, Ori and I looked at each other like, dude, it's way too dark. Like there's just no way in hell that you're gonna be able to pull this off. We thought we were gonna have to be at like 6,400 ISO and it was just gonna be noisy as all hell. I think we didn't even shoot past like 1250. Like, that, and that's, probably even higher than we went. Just with the LED wands and then the practicals in the background came out great and the footage was just razor sharp. And then we ended up just staying there and taking like a bunch of photos and everything because the location was so sick. So if you look on my Instagram um, or Dana's or Ori's, you'll see that as well as Jonathan's. So we got some photos there and we just had like a total, total blast like shooting all of that. So that was the first night, that was Saturday night. We finally wrapped up at like four o'clock in the morning. Everybody went back home, crashed, got some sleep. And then the next day we jumped back and we all met up at uh, Ori's place and we headed over to uh, Santa Clarita with Jordan, which is where you see all like the mountain scenes and stuff like that. Um, and it was a nice scenic drive out there. We got all the takes that we needed to get with like the sunset and him hiking out there. We would change his outfits to make it seem like it was a much larger scale production and like it was a, over the course of time and stuff like that. And it was one of the funnest things and I got to do a lot of the things that I love doing, which is, you know, skateboarding, uh, you know, going out and, and being in outside, you know, in the city and in the mountains. We filmed all of that out there. That was a total blast as well. And then we came back to Ori's house at nighttime. And after we came back, all the kitchen scenes that you see where he grabs his board and stuff, we filmed all of that as well. Um, then after we filmed the kitchen scenes, it must have been like, I don't know, like seven, eight o'clock at night. And there we were. The next morning was the day that we had to deliver to Fujifilm. The process for the edit was insane. Um, Basically, as soon as we finished shooting, we had to offload all the media, create proxies for everything, ingest it into Premiere, lay it all out. All knew our roles. Sean was gonna start pulling selects while Ori started hacking away at the edit. Me and Michael set up a voice recording booth so that Sean could do the voiceover. Sean was juiced up on bang energy. Everybody was, you know, just high on life, just really excited that we were working on this. We actually ended up staying up. Um, almost an entire full 24 hours. We edited through the night uh, until about 6 a.m., I think. All right, what's going on, guys? <laughs> if you're watching this right now, we have T-minus 11 hours to complete our Fujifilm spec ad for the new Fujifilm X-T4. The guys behind me have to get dedicated their entire weekend. We all came together as a collaborative effort to put this whole entire thing together. We're standing here, 11 hours to go. We gotta do voiceover, we gotta do editing, color correction, uh, sound design. Um, a little bit of VFX and a whole bunch of other shit. It's gonna be caffeine, a lot of adrenaline. Of yeah, yeah, <laughs> adrenaline and some serious fucking dedication. If you wanna get something done, you'll get it fucking done. This is the dream team right here. We will see you guys. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs>
clock was ticking the entire time. I was drinking tons of bang energy. I'm extremely sensitive to caffeine, so I started bouncing off the walls. <laughs> <laughs> We had like laughs the entire night and there was just like a really good feeling of like camaraderie and like everybody came together. I mean, even Jordan who just had to act in it, he sat there with us the entire night and we just like, you know, shit and giggled like bros and we all just kind of had fun. Everybody did their part. Long and behold, by the next morning at, uh, at what that was it, six o'clock in the morning, we finally got done. We were rendering a cut of the video. I uploaded it to my Vimeo put it in an email link and thread, which would have been 9 a.m. their time in New Jersey, and we sent it off. Um, we even sent like a little picture of ourselves in the email because we were just so damn proud of like being able to accomplish this in that amount of time. Um, and in addition to that, we just, uh, we, we took like a little bit of uh, videos behind the scenes of it all as we went. So after that, after we got it all done at 6 a.m., it was just like, wow, like I don't even know like how this came together. It was a very stressful uh, thing to do, but all that tension was taken off by just the positive attitude with everybody, everybody was involved with it, you know, the positivity behind, you know, you know, Sean and Jonathan and Dana and Michelle, Ori, all of us, we were just, we were just all about it. And, you know, we were so dedicated to getting this done in the amount of time that we had. It's a really nice sense of accomplishment. You know, everyone pulled together, everyone everyone made this happen. I mean, they made, they, it was willed into existence. Because there's really, there was, by rights, I mean, it shouldn't, it shouldn't have happened, but it was willed into existence by everyone because they, they worked so hard, uh, on, right again, on, on, this, on the little time frame, and pulled this off. And I was proud to be part of it. So I'm, uh, I'm so proud of him, so proud of everyone. It turned out incredible. And I'm glad it wasn't a learning experience. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Sean, AKA the Moth, you really did it with this one. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for getting the team together to make this video. It was something that I'm proud of and it is the most fun I've ever had making a project. All right, so I think if there's something that you guys can take away from this whole video, it's that filmmaking is very much about teamwork. It's about bringing people together in a collaborative effort and everybody adding their skill and knowledge into the pot like ingredients, you know? Um, if you're stuck in a one-man band situation right now, whether it's due to budget or creative reasons, or you're just trying to build a name for yourself, Get out of that mindset. Team up with people in your community as much as you possibly can. Um, they don't even have to be filmmakers. Let's say you can reach out to a friend who's maybe a writer. They can help you to write a script. They can help you to write dialogue or a concept for a commercial. They don't necessarily have to be a screenplay writer. You can reach out to somebody who's an interior designer to help you out with your production design. Somebody who's maybe into fashion to help you out with your wardrobe. And the list goes on and on and on. Team up with your friends around you who are in filmmaking if they are or if they are not. Team up with everybody and anybody that you can and create your next project. It is going to go a shit ton better and you're going to thank me in the end. Um, thank you guys so much if you watched this video. If you liked it, throw a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any technical questions on how we shot this thing, uh, leave some comments down below. I'll be sure to answer them and maybe make a video on how we shot it a little bit more technically. And the most important thing at the end of this also as well is I'm throwing everybody's Instagrams down below who was a part of this. If you can, go and support their artwork as well. Um, I work with them on some of their projects too. It would mean the world to me. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video and a huge last thank you, like I sound like a broken record here, to the cast and crew of this. I love you guys. It would not be possible without you. So this has been Sean. I will see you guys again on the next one. Take care.